We talk about the new 2018 Volkswagen Atlas, both as a new segment and a new strategy for Volkswagen. And we answer some viewer questions next on Talking Cars. Hi, welcome to the show. I'm Jennifer Stockberger. I'm Gabe Shenhar. And I'm Jake Fisher. Today we're going to talk about a new vehicle. We just took delivery of our 2018 Volkswagen Atlas. So kind of a new new thing for Volkswagen. Large SUV, three rows. Impressions, first impressions? So yeah, I think uh, no one should shrug at this Atlas uh, because it's really <laughs> um, very competitive and uh, it's got all the hitting it ticks all the boxes. It, uh, it's got a great powertrain. It's really roomy. I mean, the third row is a real legit kind of uh, seat for, for real adults. Uh, controls are really easy uh, and uh, it's really quiet, almost a luxury car level quietness. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's very competitive. I mean, the question is, you know, uh, it's kind of late to the party. It's uh, competing with well-established uh, nameplates out there like the Toyota Highlander and the Honda Pilot which kind of like uh, dominate the segment. And, uh, you know, it's worked and, out for it. Yeah, and Volkswagen's been a little tarnished lately and uh, in, in the public uh, opinion uh, arena. So uh, it remains to be seen how it's going to take on. Yeah, and powertrain, V6 first, right? Yes, it's a V6. Uh, the later, there's going to be a two liter turbo, but only with front wheel drive. Oh, okay. uh, but yeah. the, uh, the V6 and the eight speed automatic, it works really great. Really nice. Really nice. Any thoughts? Well, finally, right? What Americans <laughs> want. Uh, three row SUV. Um, it's, it's actually almost amazing that Volkswagen being such a huge global company has taken this long to provide that, which is such a kind of an obvious thing, right? right yep. Um, I mean, we've got lots of, you know, small station wagons and all these kind of esoteric vehicles. And even when you know, previously with the midsize SUV, they had, you know, it was two up market actually, right? It was the same platform as the Porsche Cayenne and it was kind of like a down market Porsche and yeah, sold with no talking about the row, Touareg. The Touareg, exactly. Um, so it's just kind of like, yes, this is the right car for our market and they're doing it right. You know, quiet, roomy, good, nice powertrain, not the sportiest vehicle in the, in the world. I mean, certainly not what someone you know, maybe coming from a Volkswagen background is really expected. I was say, are they going to feel alienated or like they sold out <clears> or... <throat> but, uh, yeah. Maybe. I mean, there is a potential for that. But, uh, I mean, for years, Volkswagen relied on uh, Euro-centric cars mm -hmm. that were always the smallest in the segment, mm -hmm. the most expensive in the segment. I mean, they were premium, uh, nice interiors, and they, they had the nice ride and handling. But uh, I think only in the last few years, Volkswagen realized, you know what, in order to, to compete in the U.S. market, got to go a uh, little larger, a little less expensive, a little less premium. Uh, so that's what we saw with the uh, current Passat, uh, how it uh, competes with Toyota Camry and, and others. And the same with the Volkswagen Jetta and even now with the new uh, Tiguan. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's more global thinking. So before it was like, Let's build a golf. Everyone likes golfs. <laughs> we'll sell golf in every market. And now it's very different. So the Atlas, for instance, is it's for North America and China. This is not a European vehicle. Right. I, I was saying we were talking, you know, I, I traveled in Munich. You don't see any Atlases in Munich. It's golf, 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 golf. So right. you're right. It's, it's for here. And that's interesting, that strategy to bring it just to this market. It's not a global car they need that piece. It's not a global car, but it's a global company. And, you know, the other car companies do the same thing. You know, I mean, they're not selling lots of, you know, Camrys and Highlanders in Europe. They're not even selling a whole lot of those things in Japan, their home market. So, I mean, I think it's understanding each one of the markets and figuring out, okay, fine, China and America have maybe similar tastes, so we'll build a vehicle for them. We'll build another vehicle for Europe, maybe other vehicles for uh, Japan. Yeah, I mean, the Golf is still a best-selling car in Europe, uh, and uh, but the U.S. Is, is a whole different world. Uh, I mean, the, the the Atlas built in Tennessee, and it's it's made for America. It's conceived by um, Americans working for Volkswagen. And they need that piece to 
um, you know, again, the true Volkswagen truists are going to say, you know, that's very different departure. But they need that piece to subsidize, you know, building the the full the full well, market strategy. They, they need I guess. it two, yeah. two, two, twofold. I mean, one, yeah, okay, fine. You could probably go to some Volkswagen forums, and they're like, what? Well, right. Doesn't drive that's like a real Volkswagen. At, yeah. But but you know, who cares? Because if you're looking for a three-row SUV, <laughs> maybe the steering feel isn't really the number one priority. Maybe it is that quietness of that room. But again, you got to subsidize and make the money from that so then you can buy you can sell those you know the golf r or whatever it is those esoteric cars that you that know are true to the that, right the volkswagen driving capability exactly others have there been others that have have done similar and had success in doing that other you know i think a bmw like the, you know correct me if i'm wrong when those suvs they said oh bmw is going to mm. build an suv how horrible is that but well, They're we all huge. know uh, where the market's going, and SUVs are mm, uh, kind of like uh, taking uh, chunks of uh, the sedan segment. Uh, if, and there are some uh, brands that uh, rely completely on on their SUV. Uh, for instance, uh, Jaguar uh, F-Pace. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's eighty percent of the brand now. Wow. And uh, BMW with the X5, I mean, that's one of the, probably the, the best-selling uh, BMW in the world is the X5. Right. And, and I think it's a great example with Porsche. So, I mean, with Porsche, when they came out with SUVs and front-engine cars that, you know, the, how dare they? the Pan Amer <laughs> how could they? This is not a real Porsche, and they've completely lost themselves. And the truth is, is that that's why Porsche can continue to exist. Because then people they, bought them. Yeah. Well, they buy them, they can make some profits, and they could still have the 911, the 911 GT3, and all these different, you know, these Porsche that sell in lower volumes, but keep that brand alive. If Porsche said, no, we're just doing sports cars, that's it. Mm -hmm. You just couldn't, you can't have a business model that way. Right. And there's others right. coming, right? The Subaru. Yeah, uh, yeah. in terms of uh, three-row three row uh, family SUVs. SUV, yeah, Subaru used to have uh, the Trebeca, which wasn't very successful, and now they're coming up with uh, the Ascent, uh, uh, the Ascent uh, which is probably about a year away or so. Yep. So it's it's a strong segment. Yeah. It's uh, it coming up with the Ascent. I thought that was yeah. <laughs> that was good. That was See, good. we didn't do that but intentionally. It's right? ascending. It's, but but I mean, it, it's it's again, it's it's kind of like there is a formula for these three-row SUVs. And with the Trebeca B9, I mean, I don't know if anyone remembers this car. It was just a little bit bizarre. You know, it looked looked crazy. It was smaller inside. And they're figuring out, okay, here's here's the strategy that works. Here's the size of vehicles that people are looking for. And let, let's build one, see what happens. And yeah, I do and see similarities between the Atlas and the, you know, yeah. the squarer shape, better visibility, great convenience for families. That's right. Very yeah. square, yeah. you know, there's more room inside. Oh my gosh, it and was from a brand yeah. perspective, you have to uh, let your customers uh, have something to uh, move on to. Let's say you, you grew out of a Forester. Right. Sure. Where, where do you go after a Forester? You know? And you mentioned you brought the Tiguan. We were talking about the Tiguan too. So, very similar strategy there to keep the Tiguan more for this market as well, right? Right. So, yeah, the, the old Tiguan was very uh, Eurocentric. Mm -hmm. It was small and, and too premium and too expensive. Mm -hmm. And now it's one of the largest in the segment. It's uh, 11 inches longer than the previous uh, Tiguan. It's even longer than the Chevy Equinox. Wow, uh, yeah. and that allows it to, to have uh, a third row seat. Um, uh, actually, we just have a first drive on our site about the Tiguan. So, uh, uh, anyway, it's, 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 but it's designed to uh, compete in the U.S. and compete uh, well on price, on size, and uh, not so much uh, with the, for the enthusiast market. Yep. Well, yeah. one, one so. thing that reminds me, you know, what Volkswagen is doing is almost like old school German vehicles because, you know, it used to be like the five series and the three series BMWs, they look the same except they were different sizes. You know, you cut right. the sausage a different, <laughs> different, different length and, you know, the Mercedes Benz were that way. And you look at these two SUVs, it almost looks like it's the same vehicle. One's like a little bit longer, one's a little bit bigger, but I mean, they look so they similar. And in right. in the interior is so similar. I mean, it basically has the same controls and the same pieces. It's just, do you want, you know, the seventh, eighth scale one or the, the full size one? Right. Yeah, Mini Atlas and the Maxi Atlas. Maxi Atlas. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah, and I, I was really, from from a family perspective, there's a lot of convenience in that in that van or that SUV with access. It's okay, you can call yeah. it a van. A van. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, no, no, I can't call it a van. It. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. No, no, no. That SUV. So, yeah, yeah. really. Really good. So um, we also have some viewer questions. If you guys are ready, I'll look at some questions. Sure. Why not. sure. Okay. First one. 
Consumer Reports and its reviewers used to be scholastic, but now they are just a bunch of idiots. I, I think they're talking about YouTube. I, I'm, they're probably <laughs> not talking. No, they're, now they're a bunch of idiots who are out of touch with reality in America. People buy the Toyota Camry for its reliability, no nonsense, no nonsense fuss, and family and user friendliness. No one that they know of would buy a Camry for its look, driving dynamics, etc. American families just simply want a car that will take them from point A to point B. Address that at all? Are we out of touch? So uh, he's absolutely right about uh, the Camry, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's it's right. I mean, uh, people buy it uh, because it's roomy, and it's reliable, it works for them, and uh, that's why it's been doing so well. It's not for nothing. It's the best-selling car in the U.S., selling over 400,000 units a year. Um, and uh, we actually touched upon that uh, in our previous podcast. We said, you know, the, the, the formula of the Camry is brilliant, but somehow Toyota feels the pressure to appease all the Camry detractors out there that uh, are, 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 are not um, crazy about uh, the looks or the handling and, uh, and pretty much all the buff books. And uh, we said, you know, uh, that criticism is, is largely unjustified. Uh, I mean, the Camry just gets a bad rap for some reason. But yeah, I mean, Toyota basically stuck to its uh, tried and true formula here. And, um, and it, 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 with just a little lip service for styling and, and handling, but uh, it's, it's still a great car. I'm trying to find the consumer reports that doesn't like Camrys. I mean, is there, <laughs> have we put out a lot of negative on Camry? I mean, look, I, I, I said before it's boring, and I mean that in a good way. That's what, what I really, I mean, look, it, it's boring. And, I mean, you, you, you look at, you know, I could get a Maserati or an Alfa Romeo that's in the shop. It's very exciting, you know, and maybe exciting when it, it, it leaves you stranded somewhere. But I mean, the Camry is a bit boring. It is. That doesn't mean don't buy it. I mean, it does things really, really well. And and sure, it's not, you know, that razor pinpoint, you know, handling or, and it's a bit isolated from the road. But I mean, to some people, that's luxury. You know, that's something right. that you're looking for. So, so it's quiet. No, yeah. it's, it's quiet and it's luxurious and it's decently priced and it's reliable and all these good things. So, yes, we will continue to say good things about the Camry and recommend them. Um, for sure. I also think there's a point about our ratings that, that we've had to make some some assumptions of what we think people want. And, and there's people out there that just say, tell me the best one. They don't really care how we got there, just tell me the best one. So we've created these formulas of scoring that give you the best one uh, based on that formula. But there's an opportunity, and we say this on cars and other things, absolutely delve in there. There's a ton right. of information in there. It may not be the best one for you, but read the words, look at the ratings in the areas that you're more interested in, unpack that a little bit. Our best one might not be your best sure, sure, one. Sure. And, and we're hopefully at least giving you that, you know, to say, hey, yeah. it might not be the most razor sharp, but you have to say, as a reader or a subscriber, not interested in that. So I'm gonna skip over those words. And we really encourage people to use the ratings to their own benefit. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look. You look at you look at the ratings. It's like they're not the best cars for me. Right. They're not the best cars for you right. or, or you. I mean, it's just kind of like overall these right. are they're better. But it's, all the cars have different things going for them, and yep. we try our best to try to explain what those are. The good and the bad. Right. 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 Yeah, Which may not some, be your good and bad. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it's a little difficult to cram a complex reality into just uh, right. one bar graph or right. one numerical one score. Formula. So right. you really have to uh, pay attention to the details and. And at every opportunity, we'll, we'll be the first ones to, to say, you know, if you like driving and you want a family sedan like this, uh, the Ford Fusion might be a better car for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Right. And hopefully that's there. Hopefully we've given that. So anyway. Um, hi, CR. You mentioned putting bikes into minivans standing up in an episode. And I was wondering what vehicles are not minivans that you can fit a bike in the back standing up. They've done this with a 2011 CRV, but had to completely remove the back seat. What would be some alternatives, new or used, to minivans that can fit a bike standing up without removing the seat? I'm going to give this to Jake because he does this all the time. So, yeah, <laughs> being Mr. Triathlon. So, any thoughts? Well, well look. I mean, from, from the private, from the beginning, it's like. How about a minivan? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Minivans are great. I'm always grabbing our minivans when I go on and, and go out biking. Yeah. Unless it's the Ridgeline. Well, well, okay, fine. Works. Well, I mean, the Ridgeline has been, you're right. I've been in that car for all the time because, I mean, I just went this weekend. I had 
we had five of us and we had five bikes, bikes, you know, in the back of that ridge line. And it was like, no big deal. An expensive bike. So you're, you're, you've got enough well, room. I trust I them. Mean, I mean, look, I mean, you could get a bike rack, but I mean, getting six bikes that are like, yeah. you know, hanging off the back or yeah. on the top is a little bit, little bit hairy. So ridge line is, ah, geez, that's a, that's a real nice vehicle. But um, I mean, to that point, I mean, some of the earlier RAV4s um, had a real low floor. The um, you actually came up with it oh before. i remember the, the uh, element the element that was like I took my kids to martha's vineyard and i yeah. remember folding up the seats and rolling the bikes in yeah it was great yeah the elements got i actually uh remember like 10 years ago when my kids were little and their bikes were littler i used to stand up the, the bikes in the back of the uh the, the 05 crv just fold the oh, third so of yeah, the rear point. seat mm -hmm. stand both of them up and seat belt the bikes also so right, they don't right, just right. roll in, inside the, the cab. And again, we, we mentioned, I think, a couple episodes. There was the transits, and those do work if there's extra height, but. Well, and you could yeah. deliver packages at, at the same time. time. Yeah, right, more yeah. commercial vehicles, <laughs> but they bit. were out there. I think that's from the same segment. Yeah. Um, third question, I want a Jeep. I am physically handicapped and walk with a cane, so I need an SUV. I'm having a little trouble deciding between a V6 all-wheel drive Cherokee Limited or a used V6 all-wheel drive Grand Cherokee. Size not an issue, interested in your take. Reliability is not part of my choice, so stick to Fiat Chrysler. Don't want any other brand. So one well, of the things I'll say is we did just do some coverage on best cars for senior drivers, and a lot of that is about limited mobility. Mm -hmm. at seniors age but one of the things we talk about is how great suvs can be to this bird when you get that hip height kind of slide in um ease of access that's huge right. no, no climbing no, no ducking climbing no ducking right you know you kind of sit and swivel your legs in in this case i just did a little bit of homework the grand cherokee is about five inches taller in that ground to seat height um, so I don't know how tall this person is, but both, it's not a, an especially tall SUV. So probably both of those would work from an SUV, though the Grand Cherokee is a little bit higher. Certainly I would encourage, you know, try both, you know, uh, if you can. Yeah, I'm cracking up just a little bit. It's like, you know, I have a hard time getting the car, so I need an SUV. Right. Like, what about a minivan? I mean, Chrysler right. makes a few minivans. Right, They seem yep. to be popular for those. Those are really easy to get into. Like too, they might be too big. But yeah, they're they're Probably very get easy. better fuel economy than those guys. Yep. But um, you know, I mean, the, the other thing about it is, I mean, uh, you know, I'm, well, of course, I'm you know, I don't care about reliability, so I'm, I'm kind of okay, okay, yeah. that that's fine. <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, I mean, on those vehicles, look, the 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 Grand Cherokee is such a nicer vehicle. I mean, that is just a luxury vehicle that is really nice driving. The Jeep Cherokee, okay, it's newer. It's just it's kind of an also ran. Yeah, if you're going to go with the Cherokee, get the V6 and the Limited with the leather seats. And I was thinking too, and again, I always am from the safety aspect, there would probably be some available safety in the newer version, but you're certainly getting ESC. You know, don't go any earlier than that. But um, yeah, the, the, the Grand Cherokee would work too as a better car. All right, that's about all we've got. As always, thank you for watching. If you want any more details on any of the things in the cars we talked about today, check out the show notes below, and we'll see you next time.